Hello everyone, I'm John Eggins. This is PNG Tonight. Coming up, Governor William Powey pioneers technical training for students in Australia, a move that could be taken up by all provinces. Health officials pay a visit to Barocco police over the condemned lockups and pornography gone viral in Papua New Guinea. Fifty students, ten of them females from the Southern Highlands province, are headed for Townsville, North Queensland, to further specialised education. It's the start of a new technical training similar to the TVET program between the PNG and Australian governments, but tailored to specific requirements in the provinces. Once the program gets going, other provinces are poised to follow. Under the heading Global Education, this foreign exchange is organised by Sauni Ongamani, the project manager, and Kim Sutherland, the director of Student Exchange. Sauni and Kim, thank you for coming on to PNG tonight. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Okay, ladies, you are in what is called foreign exchange. It's a, a global education concept. Uh, Kim, you've come up from Australia. Uh, Sauni, you're here in Papua New Guinea. Tell me what you are doing. We'll start with you, Sauni. Okay, uh, I'm based in Townsville, but I come here quite regularly okay. trying to uh, market the company and the, and the program. Um, the program is uh, designed by Kim here. She's the director. And I, for, as a Papua New Guinea woman and an educationist, I really believe that it's the right program for the young people of Papua New Guinea and I'm encouraging uh, Papua New Guinea students, young people to go down and be educated in Australia okay. because uh, the quality of education, as we all know, is very high and once you are educated in Australia, you can really get a job anywhere in the world. <laughs> what does the program entail? Uh, we have an education program with uh, secondary schools technical training colleges and universities where students can or the and their sponsors can decide where they want to send the students. We also provide residential services. Uh, it's a quality accommodation, better than you know some of the other accommodations that has been provided yeah. over the years. And um, it's all designed for Papua New Guinea students only. Uh, mainly I think it's because I, I have worked in Australian boarding schools and I've found that Papua New Guinea students uh, do not concentrate as much as they want to. They're very committed students, very, very good students, and yet they have a lot of um, interruptions okay. from it's other students. Side yes, yeah, sidetracked. Yeah, so yeah. Okay. that's why we decided that we'd have Papua New Guinea students only so that we can have that quality education. And then they can concentrate a, they do. a little bit better yes. and compete amongst themselves. Exactly. To make a bit better. Yes. All right. Is that different to the TVET program that's uh, with the Office of Higher Education, the government here and the governments of uh, Queensland. Australia, Queensland? And, well, I'll and get the Kim government. to answer that because she's been right. involved Kim, you with might, TVET. Yeah, you might answer that, yes. So our company actually delivers the TVET services okay. for the national government. Um, so that's a program we currently run. But in conjunction with that, uh, we have um, uh, two other programs. Uh, the secondary program, uh, like Sawney mentioned, uh, which is an alternate to boarding school. So it opens up all the education facilities uh, while we provide the residential services okay. and all the holistic care for, for the young people yes, while they're right. there. Mm. Um, then there's the tertiary and technical training. Um, so we have a business arm in the company, which I then go out and uh, do a training needs analysis in the individual provinces, look at what actually needed in the provinces okay. to build yes. human capacity right. and development. Um, and then I find the best provider of that education in Australia and match that together. Okay. Yes. So the students who are going to be chosen, if you will, and to go down to Australia, will not uh, be chosen by the Office of our Higher Education or the government no, per se, no. it's the provinces. Exactly. Okay, tell us yes. a bit about that. Okay, so um, each province, for instance, um, we have 50 students from Southern Highlands. 
Um, Gov- Honourable Governor uh, William uh, Poey oh, we- has sponsored that, um, uh, which is a really big sponsorship. 50? Yes, 50, 50. students. Boys, so girls? We've got yes. 10 young women and, and 40 young men, and they're coming oh. down to do uh, Certificate 2 training in four different trades. Okay. So those trades have been identified as something that's needed in the province oh, to continue right. to develop the province. Yes. So the education is um, actually uh, outcome based. They come back to the province, it's under a contract with the, each student, um, so and their behaviour, etc., in Australia okay. is also okay. under a contract agreement. Yes. Um, and it depends on the, the provincial leader or the industry as to what they want included in that contract. Okay. So for some, it might be that they want the student to come back and do three years of work within the province. To, for value uh, with uh, their sponsorship, okay. or for others they're quite happy, like um, Honourable Governor Powers Parkup we've been speaking to, um, who's looking at sending some students down, okay. and he's, um, he's, he's not yeah. concerned about them coming back to the province per se, or the NCD, NCD yeah. but to the country. But to the country. To so yes. it's individually tailored wow. to the provincial needs. And yeah. we've travelled to many provinces now. All right, Southern Highlands, NCD, where else? Um, I've been to Mandahagan, um, East New Britain, Rabaul, okay. New Island, Bougainville, Millen Bay. and Millen Bay. What's the interest of the governors there or the uh, members there, if you will? I, I just uh, don't think they're quite aware uh, yet. It's fairly um, new, isn't yeah, it? it so, is, yeah, it mm-hmm. is fairly new. Uh, this is where I think your program will be very useful to, to, to introduce that program the program to the people Papua of Papua, Papua New Guinea, Guinea yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, we also take um, private students as well, as Kim said. But um, I think the response has been immense. You know, the demand is there, the need is there. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. The only thing is we just need to find sponsors to sponsor okay. these kids. And the thing about it, this program in particular is that, as Kim said, but I need to stress that again, it's going right back to the province, yeah. provincial students who are missing out mm. on all this exposure nationally and internationally. And so if the governor or any politician from that particular province sponsors them, it's, it's an opening for that province. Yeah. You know, like example, Oro province, we've never seen anybody go overseas yet. You're from Oro? Yes. I thought so. <laughs> yeah. Although, you know, people like my husband in the 60s, yes. when OSAID was in program was in place, yeah. we did go to Australia for education. Okay. Okay. Since that was closed, there's been no opening unless you are in a places like Port Moresby where you go to international schools sure, here. Sure, yeah. So this is why it's very, very important to reach the provinces. I totally agree. The Southern Highlanders, the 50 of them, when do they leave or have they left? No, we're having the uh, launch with the governor uh-huh. on the 8th of April. All right. And then from there we'll continue on. We're just waiting for the passports and the visas to be completed. Okay. So how much is it costing? Um, the, the price varies depending on the training that, that's required. Okay. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to just mention too is that we're taking a very strategic approach with this built up over a number of years. So for instance, a secondary program might be longer term benefits coming back to the province with uh, professional uh, positions, etc. Yes, yes. Whereas the TVET might be shorter term, but it's about building capacity straight away. So we understand the need for more in-country education facilities, but these can be building stones or stepping stones to build that capacity. You need uh, builders to build schools. Sure. You need teachers to teach in schools. So we're trying to be strategic about building that capacity in-country while using the excellent resources that are available in Australia. So there is a cost-benefit anyway. What cost in, in Papua New Guinea to build um, we are educate without all the schools that are available at the moment, particularly um, technical training, um, where there's a huge demand. Um, these people will be able to come back and actually build those facilities and yeah. educate in them. Okay. Mm. All right. It's a wonderful opportunity uh, for those who uh, are fortunate enough to be part of this program. The other question I'll ask you, Kim, is uh, when Papua New Guineans who come from provinces suddenly the exposure in a place like Australia is a little bit of a cultural shock. Mm. A lot of exciting things uh, do happen and they tend to be carried away a little bit. And I know there's been some problem like that under the TVET program. Would that be a concern with this program? 
so I don't think so. I think um, whenever you have young people um, experiencing different things in life, there's always going to be um, some problems um, and some issues, but you need to manage those issues. Sure. Yes. Um, what we do is we employ very experienced staff. We also have lots of pastoral care. Um, we also keep uh, students very busy. For example, the cowboys come into the house yeah, yeah. and mentor the students, yeah. the different residences. Oh, cowboys, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> I was so. on fire. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so, um, same as in the food. We have PNG mums in the kitchen cooking taro. And okay. As you would know, as you have eaten at our yes, table yes, once yes. before. Yes, yes, yes. I was fortunate enough to be... Uh, uh, a recipient of your hospitality. Thank yes, you. Yes. Very good. Okay. Ladies, we are running out of time. I hope that uh, you've at least uh, expo made this exposure here and that Papua New Guineans are aware of this program, yes. particularly the provincial governors, Thank uh, you. and who will, who will take up this. And I think uh, Southern Highlands is, if you will, uh, a guinea pig in this program. Yes, Trial it out and yes. see how it goes. Yes. Excellent. All right. Thank Any last much. word? 30 seconds. Any last word? 30 seconds. Papua New Guinea needs educated, quality education, quality trade trainers. And to do that, you need to send them to Australia or even, you know, any international education uh, institutions. But I believe in Australia because Australia has the, one of the best education system in the world. Special relations, close yes, proximity. Of course, All right, yes. Kim, 30 seconds. So I'd just like to say that it's been an honour to have young Papua New Guineans um, come and study. I think we've had excellent outcomes so far and uh, that is why we now um, work solely with Papua New Guinea to build and strengthen that relationship. And I think this program has longevity. All right, okay. Sauni Ongamani and uh, Kim thank Sutherland, you, thank, thank you very you, much sir. for coming. Thank you very program. much. This is PNG Tonight. After the break, an update on the condemned Broco police cells and another downside, pornography gone viral in Papua New Guinea.